Narrator read by Pamela Krantz. What Makes Christmas Christmas by Grace Latimer Jones. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Characters Christmas Gifts read by Charlotte Duckett. Money read by Ruth Golding. Christmas Tree read by Amanda Friday. Christmas Stocking read by Ginger Cucolo. Plum Pudding read by Rapunzelina. Spirit read by Lynn Silva. An Old Man read by David Olson. The Child read by Evie Maria. King's Son read by David Lawrence. Narrator read by Pamela Krantz. What Makes Christmas Christmas? A Morality Play. The Scene. At the sides and back, the stage is hung with curtains of a cold gray tone, lighter toward the top. In the upper left corner, a bright star is shining. Across the top at the front hangs a dark gray curtain stenciled in a geometric design with dull gold paint. A dark line of drapery borders the sides of the proscenium. A little to the right, center, and more than halfway back is a stone bench with a pine tree at each end. The light is diffused and dim, to represent night. In the distance, an almost imperceptible regular drumming is heard. During the solemn parts of the play, this monotonous beat is always audible, determining the tempo of the movement. There enters right Christmas gifts, a coquettish, elf-like figure in a gold tunic and a stiff skirt, stopping at the knees. On her head is a gold cap like a cornucopia, and her stockings and slippers are gold. She enters dancing. She is followed by Moneybag, who loiters sulkily behind, examining a little musical pipe which she carries. Moneybag is dressed in a loose brown bag, tied up about the neck with a hempen rope. Otherwise he looks a little like a brownie. Why are you so excited, Gifts? Why, it's Christmas Eve, Mr. Moneybag. She curtsies mockingly. Christmas is no better for Gifts than any other time of year. What's the matter with birthdays? Poor old money bag. Kissing him and dancing off. It's such a great drain on you. Yes, it is. See how poor and thin I've grown. A month ago, my sides were all bulgy with my savings. But it's a season I thrive. You thrive, my lady, at my expense. I want to dance, money dear. Caressingly. Play me a nice little tune. Whenever you want anything, then you're very nice to me with your money, dears. You always have to rely on me for whatever you want. Money makes the dance go, yes. You're not a very aesthetic creature, though. Money tosses his head angrily. Oh, but we all love you. You're ever so much better than you look. Come, play me a nice little tune to dance to. Tra-la-la-la-la, tra-la-la-la-la. Still pouting and shaking his head. I think my pipe is broken. He plays a few discords. <coughs> Always broke when I ask you for anything. Come, just one little tune. Money begins to play and Gifts starts her dance. Suddenly, abruptly, in the middle of a strain, Money breaks off and begins to examine his pipe with great interest. Oh, do play! Stamping her foot. It's so tantalizing, Money, to have you give out this way. Yes, it's money this and money that, at your beck and call all the while. I can't keep on forever, can I, with no pauses to catch my breath? It's hard work to keep time all the time. There's a good old money bag kissing him. A nice old money bag. Of course you have to pretend that times are hard. Money grunts and begins to play. <laughs> After a few bars, he again stops abruptly on a high note and falls to examining his pipe. 
You always give out this way at the crucial moment, dear money bag. Just one more little strain. The strain's too much for me. How stingy you are. And your music is pretty poor too. I notice it's good enough for your dancing. I'd dance to a different tune if I could. Airily. It's my artistic temperament anyway, which furnishes all the charm. Artistic temperament indeed. When did that ever furnish anything but trouble, I'd like to know. Enter left, Christmas tree. He wears a short, flaring green tunic, trimmed with horizontal evergreen bands, green knickers, brown stockings, and scarlet slippers. On his head is a peaked green cap. From time to time, electric lights shine out on the point of his cap, and in the evergreen bands. Here, here, you two squabbling again. Why, it's Christmas Eve, the time for shouting and laughter. See how I shine. The bulbs glow and flicker out. He won't play for me. Oh, yes, he will, and like a right good fellow, too. Why, one hour more, and it will be Christmas, Mr. Bag. See how I shine with the festive spirit. The lights glow a moment. Now, if ever, is the time to play. Come, gifts, we'll have a little dance together. They caper about, but Money continues to sulk and examine his pipe. Come, come, Money. What would gifts be without you? She can expect no more of me. Gifts, flinging arms round his neck. Dear old Money Bag. You're too fickle. Not in loving you. This is the season of jollity. See how I shine. The lights glow again. Just one short piece, then. He begins to play. Gifts and tree join hands. It's scandalous the way you treat him. You're so changeable. You seem to forget that Christmas gifts must be all things to all men. They dance. Presently the music stops again on a high note in the middle of a strain. Money is given out again. A new tune starts up merrily as stocking enters left. He wears a blue and white doublet and a square cap on his head. On the whole, he resembles a checked pantaloon more than anything else. Stocking dances gaily while gifts and tree give him the floor. Poor Stocking. It's very seldom money spends any effort on him. You mean it's very seldom money is ever spent on him. Women are so reckless in what they say. Stocking stops, breathless. How well you dance tonight, Stocking. On Christmas Eve, I always dance well. I'm dancing dreams into the heads of all the children. The stockings are hung by the chimney with care, you know. That's the very core of the whole thing. What would Christmas be without me? Why, I am Christmas. Rubbish, old fellow. You're all right, of course. In fact, you play your part very nicely. But what would Christmas be without a tree? See how I shine. The lamps glow. Sooner a Christmas any time without a tree than without a stocking. Why, it's the whole joy of Christmas to hang up your stocking, have dreams dancing on your head all night, and dash down in the morning to pull out... Gifts. There you are. It's gifts they're after. What would an empty stocking be? It's gifts, gifts, gifts that makes them happy. Stocking is about to retort, but Tree pushes him aside. There, there. Don't quarrel. We all admit that Christmas would be a pretty slow thing without you, Stocking, and that you'd be a pretty disappointing fellow without gifts. You're both essential to Christmas. I, I guess, guess so. so. Christmas Eve and no stocking. Why, it's inconceivable. Who ever heard of a Christmas with no gifts? Why, I enter every lowest hovel, bringing joy wherever I go, and spreading Christmas cheer. I visit the rich man in his villa, and the convict in his prison, and the soldier in his trench. Everywhere I go, helping, encouraging. Sententiously. Making all men brothers. The whole world becomes one vast fraternity under the charm of Christmas gifts. Wherever I look, I will see Christmas smiling. See how I shine. The lamps flash. What is a home without me when Christmas dawns? Why, I am the very center and symbol of joy. Round me the family gather and look at me with smiling eyes. I am the shrine of Christmas. Christmas is Christmas without a single gift if I stand shining by the hearth. Hmm. 
where would you all be without me? Who ever heard of anyone's keeping Christmas without money? I may not make as much show as some of you here, but money's the biggest thing in life. What's a man without money? Where can he live? What can he eat? What can he do? I build canals and palaces and the great ships that sail on the sea. I wage war and bring back peace again. I erect hospitals and bring men healing and comfort. Without me, the whole world would fall into chaos and the race of men would perish. Christmas without money, indeed. Here comes Plum Pudding. He has attended countless Christmas festivals. Yes, but think of his reputation. I'll admit that he isn't averse to a little liquor and is often in his cups. But he's a man of the world and has seen life. He ought to know what makes Christmas Christmas. Let's lay the whole matter squarely before him and abide by his decision. Yes, Plum Pudding knows what's what. I agree. And I. And I. Enter left, Plum Pudding. He is a portly old gentleman dressed in black velvet with red stockings and a red sash. Good evening, Mr. Pudding. We're having a little discussion here about who's most essential to Christmas. Now I... Just tell them, please, what Christmas would be without a tree. See how I shine. The lamps glow. Hum. Mr. Pudding, did you ever hear of a Christmas without gifts? She takes his arm coquettishly and smiles up at him. <coughs> well, no. Of course you didn't. Where would they all be, sir, without me? Put them all straight now. See how I shine. The lamps glow. Did you ever hear of a child who forgot to hang up his stocking on Christmas Eve? There's a good deal of wisdom in all these claims. Christmas would indeed be a poor thing without stocking. See how I shine! The lamps glow. A tree is very important. Gifts pulls his arm. And no one would be willingly forgotten by gifts. He smiles at her. Without money? Yes. Where would they all be without money, eh? Where, indeed. Well? 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 Well, what is it that makes Christmas Christmas? What? 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 Is it possible you don't know? All shake their heads. Gifts, smiling at him. What do you think? Think? I don't think. I know. Oh. 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 What is the road to a man's heart? Why, his stomach, of course. Do you see? Plum pudding is what makes Christmas Christmas. Didn't you all refer to me? Plum pudding turns and struts off right in a superior manner. Always puts himself above everybody else. Too much ego, my dear tree. Always overestimating his own importance. The way to a man's heart is through his purse. Why, I can tell you. A gay tinkling sound is heard, and a lithe, yellow-clad figure enters right. She is dancing and is picking imaginary flowers. Spirit. I am young and take pride in the flowers in my hair. My foot are cherry, my bed a brown fur. This is no one I know. Nor I. Spirit, still gathering imaginary flowers and weaving them into wreaths. Morning glories and rue and harebells growing with daisies. I don't see anything. All growing under the Christmas star. She thinks they're there. Perish the thought. All sweet flowers for my garland. The rose, the lily, and the stately dahlia. Tree, stepping up to her. See how I shine. The lamps glow. Oh, no, no. Drawing back. You're no child of the wood and meadow. Though my dress be in tatters, my footsteps are light. The stars in the sky happy when I see. She'll be asking us to have a cup of moonlight next. She's mad. I'll speak to her. What's your name? I seek with a bee, draining sweet from the thorn. 
Joy touches my heart like the wing of a bird. Well, where did you come from? I can't say the exact place. I have come from the mountains of the Sierra Nevada, down through a great sweep of wheat country. So I wandered along the banks of the Ohio and touched the hills again and passed into the mist over the waves into the great turmoil of the nations. But where is your home? Singing as she pleats her wreaths. When the sun shines out, the spring is my cup. And I hear from the trash that her nestling is flow. You see, she won't tell. I pass here and there, lodging the hearts of men. And I reach down and set my magic on children. Aren't you cold out in the night with that thin dress? The December winds are blowing down from the great ice fields in the north, but I am not cold at all, for my heart warms me. This is no time to be thinking about yourself. This is Christmas night, don't you know that? The time when there's love and goodwill among men, and everyone is giving himself in joy and service for others. See how I shine! The lamps gleam. The spirit looks about her, bewildered. Everybody is expected to give a little. I have flowers. They're only in your mind. Enjoy and laughter. They don't cost anything. They're just in the hearts of the people. Holding out his cap to her. Everybody is expected to give a little. That's much too small to contain my gifts. The spirit disappears. Whoever saw the like, such as some folk have. Enter right an old man with his little grandson. They are very poor and wretched. The old man carries on his back a sack, which contains all his possessions, and the little boy has a swag on the end of a stick. They come in and rest themselves and their burdens on the bench. I'm old, old by a hundred years and wearied out. Yet it's near midnight, and we must be getting on to some shelter. How far must we go, Grandfather? It's always a long way, child, that the poor must travel. A long and weary way. Money slinking away. They're beggars. Gifts coming forward. It's Christmas Eve, my good man, and the hour of midnight is near. I was coming to seek you. I'm gifts. Christmas is for the rich. Bitterly. Not for us poor folk. Driven forth on the road to celebrate with gifts. See how I shine! The lamps gleam. On Christmas Eve, even the poor man can bear home a balsam from the hills and light a taper in its branches to the blessed child to shine into the eyes of his own children. Old man, turning away. It's a roof tree that I'm lacking this Christmas Eve, young man. But though the poor man has no home, he has yet a fire where the Christmas stocking may hang. Tonight? The highway is my hearth, friend. Enter left the spirit and touches the old man on the sleeve. Father, I too have come a long road on Christmas night, and I'm going a longer still. Shall we not go on together? Ah, company on the long dark road. That's something now, my friends. Where did you get those flowers? Mad. 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 You see... We're very poor, my grandson and I. We're too poor to keep Christmas. I didn't see any flowers, Grandfather, as we came along. But now, why are they going everywhere? And what a fine smell they have. Can't you see how she's fooling you? Where are her flowers now? But can a fine lady like you be seen on the road with poor folks like us? Kings came to him in his manger. Then let us be getting along. For the road is dark and difficult. The way is bright with moonlight, and the hedges are thick with daisies and harebells, and the meadows are dotted with buttercups. We shall pass orchards, too, with plums and peaches, and big and little apples, and hanging grapes on a trellis. Incredulously. This reminds me of the days when I, too, was young and unwearied. And before us, fate will run like a wild deer on the mountains. Oh, rarer than wealth are the flowers on my brow, and rarer than peace 
like the flame in my heart. The old man and the child go out left with a confident air, accompanied by the spirit. As they go, they do not heed the others. She carries a high head now and despises us as if she were our betters. There they go, a couple of poor daft shadows begging along the road. A reproach to good people who are enjoying Christmas. A cloud of incense rises behind the spirit and the old man and child. Don't you see a mist rising there? Odd. And smell a holy fire. And together they have passed into the mist. And who is she anyway? And what was her business here on Christmas night? She's only a poor mad thing with her flowers and her orchards and her moonlight. It's an ill time to be meeting creatures like that. The holy Christmas Eve. The old man's coat was very poor indeed. He needed a new one. His hood was all tattered. And his stockings were only rags. But he refuses our assistance. That's the way of the poor. They'd rather freeze before our eyes than ease us by taking help. He listened to her quick enough. To empty promises and vain hopes held out. With all her talk about flowers, yes. See how I... He jumps aside, startled, and cries out. She has taken away my shine. The others look on in amazement. A pox on her for taking away the good old ways of celebrating Christmas. Suddenly the king's son appears left on the highway. He is dressed in a short purple tunic and wears a golden circlet on his brow. Money immediately runs forward to salute him. Money always follows in the footsteps of the great. All stand in the way of the king's son, saluting him. He looks peevish and is evidently annoyed at the interruption. What do you want of me? It was to you, sire, that we were about to proceed. It was to you, first of all, in the wide realm, that we would bring our Christmas greetings. And who are you, pray? I am Christmas Gift, with my faithful attendant money bag. And we have saved for you the rarest and best. But I don't want any more gifts. Already the palace is filled up with them. Birthday gifts, christening gifts, Christmas gifts, 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 till my eyes are tired of looking. Sire, you are right. I am the only true symbol of Christmas. I, the Christmas stocking. You hang me up in the chimney corner, and all night long dreams and fancies dance over your head. I'm much too old for such nonsense. Why, I haven't hung up my stocking for ever so long. Sire, I am the Christmas tree. See how I shine. He hesitates to try, but the lights gleam out again. I am the shrine of Christmas. On Christmas morning the family gather round me. I'm tired of Christmas trees. I have them every year and they're always the same. All these things are nothing to me, for in my heart there is a great heaviness. What is it that makes Christmas Christmas? I have set out tonight on the great highway of the realm to see whether I shall find Christmas there. I have left my father's house, where I walk between walls of beaten bronze, lighted with silver lamps, and where my father sits on a high throne with a crown on his head and a mastiff at his feet. In the courtyard festive preparations are going forth, and there is a great coming in of kings and princes. But Christmas joy has deserted our palace. I remember the time when my heart was high on Christmas night. But now everything is sodden and dull. Enter left spirit, dancing. No gem and no gold can my spirit oppress. No mesh and no net stay the wing of my flight. Who is she? He goes toward her, spirit gathering flowers and singing. The summer leaves fall when the harvest is ripe. The lark song is heard when the shadows are long. There is a princess in the court who has come up from the south and sits pining for me by the window but I'll have none of her. And now when I put out my arms to you, you do not come. All men have a deep thirst for joy. Come to my father's house, and we will dance together in the gardens, you and I, playmates. Oh, no, no. In palaces there are sad hearts, where then be the duties of Christmas. I must be happy and free. But I will make it different. You may come and go as you will, and you may have a great tall gendarme, to keep away anyone who annoys you. And you can console yourself by giving to the poor, 
who are always near the golden gate. Spirit dancing away and singing. I pine and I sigh for no gift and no gold. The glow in the west is treasure to me. The spirit disappears. It does a heap of good to talk to her. She won't even listen to the king's son. Enter left the old man and the boy. Alas! Joy caught at my sleeve and disappeared. It is the only thing which will not dwell in palaces. She was taken away from us, as everything else is taken. Because there was nothing there. To the old man. She and her flowers were an empty show to delude poor daft folks like you. With her, the way was not dark. While she ran beside us, we walked in moonlight. Then she ran ahead. She would wait for us, she said, at the crossroads further on. And she vanished like dew. But when she was gone, our sorrow returned, and the weariness of the way, and we could not see ahead. The poor, too. She held in her hands joy like a great light. I saw it shining there, and it vanished again. My light! She stole it from me for a little while. What did I tell you? Empty promises. He thought she would wait for his coming at the crossroads. Her blossoms bloomed only a moment, old father. Then she deserted you, leaving you on the road alone. And she left me, too. Our promises were much more substantial, but you turned from them to her flowers. Did you touch them, then? Did you take them in your hands? What I see is mine. She offered fair sight to our eyes and gentle thoughts to our hearts, such as belong to the poor and to the children and to poets. The king and the rich hold their possessions in their hands. But who can play the tyrant with the eye and the thought of a poor man? Hark! Again she is filling the air with her sweet sounds. All stop and listen. Spirit sings in the distance and is not seen. My voice meets the voice of the forest and love, but the sun never shines on the gold of the reach. It is strange. Her figure is not here. Yet the sound comes to us like the film of a dream. The form, too, is here, if you see it. Spirit still in the distance. My life is a joy. Let no mystery cloud. With no pain and no takes, I give and I get. This night my longing has been fulfilled. And the poor have been happy. This is no place for us. Gifts, money, tree, and stockings slink away left as the spirit continues to sing, still in the distance. My fancy, my palace, my joy, my throne, my dreams are my real, and my garlands my crown. Though she speeds over the earth tonight, her spirit has found its resting place. For she dwells in our hearts. The drum beats heavily twelve times. Curtain End of What Makes Christmas Christmas by Grace Latimer Jones